Good morning, and welcome morning. to Trinity Lutheran Church, where we welcome, equip, and serve in the name of Jesus. I'm Dr. Kathy Reuter, and I'm leading the service today. And today is Holy Trinity Sunday. Last week, we reminded that there was a tradition in the summer of sharing God moments, or times when you say, praise Jesus. Have there been any God moments this week? This week? Anyone? been a quiet week. <laughs> All right, I would like to welcome Steve to talk about our outdoor worship space. It is a good morning, even though it looks like rain, I don't think it's going to happen. We uh, are celebrating Trinity Sunday and honoring the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. And we should honor the Father for creating this beautiful outdoor environment that we get to live in. And for the Son who forgives us of our sins for not always taking the best care of it. And for the Holy Spirit for allowing us to live in such a special, pristine environment in this part of the world. And our special music today is the Robin. <laughs> we have uh, a few things I want to talk about in terms of outdoor space and what additions we made this year. This space was created 18 years ago. It was renovated last spring, and this year we added quite a few features. If you're sitting underneath the parks, look up and notice that they've been completely rebuilt so they don't pond water anymore. We've also added railings coming down to the altar area, including the post, and then redoing the pavers along that area. We put a retaining wall in behind the altar to provide a little more comfort and safety. This was kind of a tight space. So then we added a railing behind it for additional safety, steps down to the youth gathering area. We replaced the last pond liner in the upper pond, we replaced all the rocks and pressure washed them. And the koi fish, which had their home in an aquarium all winter, are now back in that space. And yesterday we added some white water lilies to the front pond area. The deck has been painted, we've done some things with the sound system. We've added 20,000 pounds of trap rock on the walking paths coming in here. We seeded prairie seed in the prairie west of you here. Uh, last fall, we locally gathered seed from prairie in the area. And then this spring, we added some prairie plant material, so we should see some blooms in the next couple of weeks. We added trees and shrubs along the area to try to keep ahead of the deer's appetite. Not an easy task. <laughs> we, uh, have done quite a few things, including adding these flowers in the front and back of the church, and there were a lot of people involved in helping with these projects. You know who you are, and it's greatly appreciated. There's a lot of talent in this congregation, and all of us with our different abilities make a big project like this a lot more feasible. And finally, one of the most important features, even though it may not sound like one, is we added a faucet back here so that we can have water closer to the waterworks area instead of dragging 250 feet of hose around the building every time we wanted to water the plants. And then we added an automatic watering system to the plants and to keep fill the pond in the falls area. For those of you sitting here today, I just want you to take it all in and I want you to understand this time of year and how special it is. And for those who are watching online, I hope that you're close to a window because you too need to understand and appreciate and be grateful for God's creation. This time of year is a special time of the year. It's a time of rebirth. Every year, like magic, God recreates the earth. The trees leaf out, the flowers bloom, our gardens grow, the fawns appear out in the field, the birds are back and raising their young. It is nature in abundance that surrounds us. We have the privilege of being in this amphitheater area out here to worship God in a peaceful setting. I hope that all of these features out here are not only inviting, comfortable, and inspiring, but allow you to be still and know who your guy is and what he has created for us. He gave us all this as a gift. Future past generations did their best to take care of it, and in our short lifetime, it was our responsibility to also take care of God's creation and leave it in better shape than we found it. 
But in order for it to be sustainable, for God's plan to unfold and continue, we need to involve the next generation, the young children. We all have the ability to be teachers, and we need to teach the young children the same appreciation for this place that we have. And how do we do that? We get them out of the home, away from the electronic devices. We take them by their hand. We go for a walk across our lawns, through the fields and the woods, by the lake or the stream, and we point things out to them. Children are naturally curious. They want to know. They will ask you questions. Answer to those questions, not with a dismissive short answer, but with a long answer, a story, if you will. Tell them a story about that butterfly or that flower, what it will become just like them. Get them more curious, and then take their hand and go to the next spot, point something else out to them. And they, over time, will learn a deep appreciation for God's creation and, hopefully, the stewardship responsibilities that come with it. Thank you. Turn to your bulletins and we will start. Blessed be the Holy Trinity, one God, the fountain of living water, the rock who gave us birth, our light, and our salvation. Amen. Amen. We have three gathering hymns for Trinity Sunday here, so if you feel like standing up, they're loud, active hymns. And uh, Tam, go ahead and start. <laughs> in the presence of God and one another. Most merciful God, we confess, we confess that we have not followed your path, but have chosen our own way. Instead of putting others before ourselves, we long to take the best seats at the table. When we have by those in need, we have to walk and pass by the other side. Set us again on the path of life. Save us from ourselves. Hear the good news. God does not deal with us according to our sins, but delights in granting pardon and mercy. In the name of Jesus Christ, your sins are forgiven. 
you are free to love as God loves. Amen. Amen. Please join me in the prayer of the day. Almighty Creator and ever-living God, we worship your glory, eternal and one, and praise your power one and three. Keep us steadfast in this day. Defend us in all adversity, and bring us at last into your presence, where we live in endless joy and love. Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. You may be seated for you. Good morning. <clears throat> the first reading is Psalm 8. O Lord, our, o Lord, our Lord, how majestic is your name in all the earth. You whose glory is chanted above the heavens out of the mouths of infants and children. You have set up a fortress against your enemies to silence the foe and avenge it. When I consider your heavens, the work of your fingers, the moon and the stars, you have set in their courses. What are mere mortals that you should be mindful of them, human beings that you should care for them? Yet you have made them little less than divine, with glory and honor you crown them. You have made them rule over the works of your hands, you have put all things under their feet, all flocks and cattle, even the wild beasts of the field, the birds of the air, the fish of the sea, and whatever passes along the paths of the sea. O Lord, our Lord, how majestic is your name in all the earth. The second reading is Romans, from Romans 5, verses 1 through 5. Therefore, since we are justified by faith, we have peace with God through our Lord Jesus Christ, through whom we have obtained access to this grace in which we stand. And we boast in our hope of sharing the glory of God. And not only that, but we also boast in our sufferings, knowing that suffering produces endurance, and endurance produces character, and character produces hope, and hope does not disappoint us, because God's love has been poured into our hearts through the Holy Spirit that has been given to us. Word of God, word of life. Thanks be to God. According to John, the 16th chapter. Glory to you, O Lord. Jesus said, I still have many things to say to you, but you cannot bear them now. When the Spirit of truth comes, he will guide you into all the truth. For he will not speak on his own, but will speak whatever he hears. And he will declare to you the things that are to come. He will glorify me, because he will take what is mine and declare it to you. All that the Father has is mine. For this reason, I said that he will take what is mine and declare it to you. You may be seated. I would invite anyone who likes chocolate chip cookies to come on down. <laughs> anyone? Any takers? <laughs> Like, I'll come out there. Hopefully I brought enough. And I need I need at least three doctors to help with this project. So I have Dr. Tom, Dr. Mark, and Dr. Kathy. As you know, doctors are not good at opening blinds in the church. And hopefully we can get through this exercise. But you guys want to sit, but sit. Up or over there or wherever. Okay, so we have a word to learn today. Can everyone see? No. <laughs> now can everyone see? All right. So when I look at a word that I haven't seen before, I 
usually look at the end of it first. And I see that there's an E there. And you've been taught probably that that's a silent E. So that E is silent, but it has to do something, and I want to get rid of it. So I look at words kind of like I look at math. So I'm going to cross off the E, but since it has to do something, I can't just get rid of it. And there's a consonant here, and then a vowel there, what this silent E does is makes this U long. When it's long, it has to say its name, U. So we know that the end of this word is U. Oops, and I don't have a smoker, sorry. We know that the end of this word is U. So... There are now two vowels that I have to deal with, because I got rid of that one. So when there are two vowels, I know that there are two syllables in that word, because a syllable is a part of a word with a vowel in it. So I divide it here. So there are two syllables. Now there's not a consonant by that vowel, so it's all by itself, so it shouts its name. Also making this one long. So, can anyone give me any words that start with try? Trident. What else? Triangle. Triangle. Triathlon. Triathlon. Triennial. Triangle. So, what does try mean? Now, yoon, if it's at the beginning of a word, is uni. Any uni words? Unicycle. Okay, unicycle, uni. I didn't Unity. hear that. Unicorn. Unity. Unity. Uniform. So, universe. So, what's uni? One. So, our word today is three and one our triune God for Trinity Sunday. All right. Thank you. <laughs> and I do have chocolate chip cookies. I've individually wrapped them, so we can pass them around if you'd like. <laughs> Anyone who went on the mission trip or has been in a lock-in or anything else knows about the chocolate chip cookies. <laughs> <laughs> ben and Frank, please share the cookies. Oh, I know. <laughs> Pass it down the line. <laughs> All right, cookies. Share. Share mine. All right. All right, well, those are being passed around. So, several months ago, I was asked if I would be willing to lead the worship service today. At the time, I was in the process of applying to seminary, so I thought it would probably be a good idea to give it a try, since I had never led a worship service before. What I did not know until I looked at the church calendar was that it was Trinity Sunday. I did not feel at all prepared to, pre to preach on Trinity Sunday at Trinity Lutheran Church. Maybe I should have thought a little more carefully before saying yes. At this point in my life, I certainly do not feel qualified to preach on Trinity Sunday at Trinity Lutheran Church. But then is anyone truly qualified to talk about the Trinity? As I began to think more about the Trinity, I noticed threes in my life. For example, on 6-6-2022, Mark and I celebrated our 30th wedding anniversary. Three days later, on 6-9-2022, I had my initial candidacy interview, and three days later today, Trinity Sunday, I'm giving the sermon. When I look at all the numbers in all of those dates, they are all divisible by three. In addition, if you add the numbers in any of these dates, you get a number which is also divisible by three. For example, if you add 6-12-2022, you get 2,040, which is divisible by three. And if you make the date into one long number, 6,122,022, that number is also divisible by three. 
With all these threes, to me it makes it an amazing time to be discussing the Trinity, and certainly makes me think about the Trinity. So what is Trinity Sunday? Trinity Sunday is the first Sunday after Pentecost. As we learned last week, Pentecost is when the Holy Spirit descended upon the disciples and followers of Jesus. Trinity Sunday is when we celebrate our triune God. But why is a triune God important? If you think about the first commandment, it states, you shall have no other gods before me. We therefore cannot worship God separate from Jesus, separate from the Holy Spirit. The three are one. The concept of three in one can be difficult for us to understand, just as it is difficult for us to understand God. However, God does not have any difficulty understanding the Trinity. Maybe, though, the Trinity helps us understand God. John 3.16 tells us, For God so loved the world that he gave his only Son, so that everyone who believes in him may not perish, but have everlasting life. God in human form, Jesus, died for our sins so that we can live forever. But in addition to giving us everlasting life, Jesus came to earth to live and interact with people, all kinds of people, people like you and me. In Jesus' time, people saw him, touched him, interacted with him, learned from him, and believed in him all helping humans understand God. In addition, Jesus spent three years teaching us how to live, truly live our lives. Jesus taught us how we should love God and love each other. Our learning, however, did not end at the cross. The Holy Spirit in all of us keeps us, keeps everything alive and relevant in the past, the present, and the future. In our gospel for today, John 16, 12 through 15, Jesus again prepares the disciples for his departure from earth. Jesus still has many things to say, but not now. More things are happening in the future that cannot be understood now. Jesus knows he will be leaving earth, but he also knows his Holy Spirit is not leaving. And there is more to come. Jesus assures the disciples and us that the Holy Spirit will remain. The Holy Spirit will stay with the disciples and in us forever, constantly guiding us and leading us. Even though Jesus no longer walks on earth, the Holy Spirit remains, always remains. Through Jesus, we were able to see God, and by his death and through the Holy Spirit, we were able to continue to we are able to continue to experience God. Our triune God allows us to more fully comprehend and experience God in a way humans can more fully understand. On this Trinity Sunday, how do you experience our triune God? Do you see God in others? Do you see God in nature? Do you see God in how you live your life? Our triune God is everywhere. Our triune God is here. One Sunday in an outdoor service here at Trinity, I shared a God moment. I said I had seen five different rainbows in one day, something I had never seen before. I began to think, what are the odds of seeing five different rainbows in one day? When the <coughs> odds are so small, it seems almost impossible for something to happen. I see God's hand in the timing. Since that time, I have seen lots of rainbows. The rainbows make me stop, and if even only for a moment, think about God's presence in my life. A few months ago, Mark, my husband, Tom, one of my three sons, and I went to Florida with a childhood friend of mine. One morning, as we were standing in the kitchen, a little rainbow landed right on my friend's shoulder. I thought it was so amazing that she had a little rainbow right there on her shoulder. At the time, the rainbow made me think about God, but I had no idea what else was to come. I simply told her she had a rainbow on her shoulder. 
That evening, as we were grilling outside, she told me how happy her mother would be to know that we were there with her on the anniversary of her mom's death. What were the odds that my friend was standing in the right place at the right time when the sun was at the right angle to hit her window and reflect a rainbow onto her shoulder at the right moment when I was standing there to see it on the anniversary of her mom's death? All I can see is our amazing God's hand in the timing. Think about the Trinity and what it means when you see God in rainbows, sunsets, butterflies, people, everywhere. Understand God through Jesus, God in human form, who died on the cross for our sins so that we may have eternal life and taught us to love and care for each other. Feel God's Holy Spirit inside you, always present, always guiding, always there. So, how will you experience the Trinity on 6-12-2022? Please join me in the singing of our hymn. <laughs> to sin and death, we pray to the God of resurrection for the church, people in need, and of all creation. Loving God, lead us to follow your spirit rather than our own prejudices or desires, as the church cares for one another. Open us to perceive your gifts in those we least expect. God, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Inspire us to praise you through the beauty and majesty of the natural world around us. Urge us toward more deliberate care of the world you have made. God, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Hasten to dwell among those who are in pain or distress, especially Linda, Ken, David, Tom, Linda, and those we name aloud or silently in our hearts. As Christ enters our deepest suffering, 
who remain with those experiencing despair and great need. God, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Place holy love at the center of all our relationships and communities. By your love, heal us, convict us, and renew us. Bring an end to suffering of any kind in our church and communities. Let everyone know your goodness by the love we show one another. God, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Gracious God, you hear all who cry out to you. Bless our congregation and community, especially some of our special Trinity Lutheran families. David and Jean Benson, Jason, Susie, and Theo Cole, Chuck and Dee Smith, and Matt and Sandy Vesper. Guide us on our journey, God, in your mercy. Give us a place in the diverse company of your beloved saints. Teach us the value of each person's identity, and bless us with a shared identity as your children, kindred of Christ. God, in your mercy, hear our prayer. In your mercy, O God, respond to these prayers and renew us by your life-giving spirit. Through Jesus Christ, our Savior. Amen. Amen. There's a ladies' night out. There's a guys' night out. There are, we're going to start Wednesday night services, and it, it's going to be more a gathering, a food and fellowship, and that will start on July 13th, so that will be in the, um, in the trumpet. And then Potter's Shed on the 24th. What time, guys? 5.30. 5.30. 5 at the Potter's Shed. We can see Ben and Frank playing. It should be a good show, so I encourage everyone to attend, June 24th. Any other announcements that anyone has or wants to share? OK, 
Okay. The God of peace, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, bless you, comfort you, and show you the path of life this day and always. Amen. All right. Now we have ascending him.